Hello again. Well, I'm on a quest to make something for my wife. It's some shelving units. And I also want to make some front faces for some cabinets. And my design calls to put wood together at a butt joint like this. Now, if you're putting wood together like this, of course, you can just run screws or brads in the side. But to make like a picture frame or, you know, a cabinet face like this, it can be difficult. So I picked one of these up. It's a portable pocket hole jig kit that I got from Harbor Freight. I'll put a link, you know, in the description somewhere up here or up on the video. Anyway, let's go ahead and check this out and see if this will solve our problem to put two pieces of wood together just like this. So that's coming up next. Okay, this came out of Harbor Freight. It's item 96264. Let's see what's in the box. There it is. Here's a bag of some hardware like mounting screws, Allen wrenches, and a collar there. And they give you a hundred screws to get you started of various sizes. This is the bit that you'll be using. It's a special bit for pocket holes. You can see on the tip here, it has a pilot hole cutter and then it's larger down here, which accepts the head of these screws. More on that in a moment. Here's a book. And the actual machine. So let's go ahead and put this together, get using it. All right, there's just a little bit of setup involved. These two little machine screws right here go in these two holes um, for storage. You'll only use these if you're doing half inch stock. And if you're doing half inch stock, what you'll do is screw them into these two little holes here. And instead of your wood resting on the base here, it'll rust on the screws up like that. This is three quarter inch stock, so we're not going to use them, but uh, that's what those are for. It just gets the wood up a little bit higher for half inch. Also with this kit came this bracket and this bracket is for portability. What you can do is take these off and mount them to this and that way you can use the, the jig without the clamp so you can use it portably. Like say you want to fix a table or something, you can put this whole thing on a table. So you can just put these two on this and then use it like that. Maybe we'll play with that later. Anyway, I'm going to put these in here. Let's look at this side over here. So if I loosen this screw up right here, I'm able to move these two things back and forth. And these are the actual drill guides and it's marked as how you use it. You'll use these back two holes right here if you're doing anything under one inch. And you'll use these two for one inch to one and a half inch is what it is. And this is the guide for the drill here. You see how it goes like that in there. We've got to adjust this with our collar. But first, what I want to do is set this up so that we're putting the holes in the right location. And we're going to do two pockets in the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and just set it about that far apart right there. Okay, tighten it up. We're not exact here, we're just guessing about like that. Now, the way that you set up the drill is you put the collar on like this, okay? And then you put it inside the drill guide like this. And you don't want the drill guide touching the base. 
you want it just off the base. So I'm gonna get my Allen key here and I'm gonna lift up that bit just slightly and then tighten. You can see there's a little space in there. That way this collar will prevent me from, you know, hitting into the base just like that. I could probably go down just a tad more, but I think that'll be fine. And then the only other thing that I have to adjust is the clamp. And when you put your wood in there, this is what will clamp it. And to adjust this, what you do is you just turn this and it will make it come out more or less. So we're just gonna extend this out by turning it. And you don't need a lot of clamping pressure, but uh, just enough to hold the piece. And then once you get, you know, your pressure where you want it, then you can take this and turn it onto it and that'll lock it in like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the workbench where my drill is. And we're gonna pop these holes in there and see how it works out. Well, before we head over to the workshop to drill our holes, let's decide what we're gonna make for a test. I cut some pine up, just some scraps, so we can experiment. What I'd like to see is just a frame to see how that's going to work out. You know, simulate like a, almost like a picture frame. And this would be useful for kitchen cabinets, you know, something like that right there. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is mark where I want my pocket holes. Now, I could put the screw going in this way, or I could have the screw going in this way if I wanted. I think it would be better to go ahead and run the screw in this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark with an X where I want my pocket holes, just like that. So I've got uh, eight holes that I have to drill here. Let's get over there and drill these holes. All right, what I've done is I've clamped it down to my workbench and what I plan to do is mount this to a scrap piece of wood, although I'm just going to use it like this for now to give it a try. Full disclosure, I've not done this yet. This is, will be my first holes. So I've got my wood mark with my pencil. I'm just going to go ahead and center this on the guide and clamp it in. And I'm going to run a hole in here and a hole in here. I've got my electric drill here. I've decided to use the corded drill because I think speed's more important when drilling holes. And what I'll do is I'll just let the drill do the work. I don't want to push real hard. So I'm just going to set it in here and just begin. Okay, I can probably go a little faster. Let's try that again. Let's see what we've done here. Look at there. A little fuzzy, but uh, to be expected. Good. Let's do the other side. Clamp it in. So far, easy. OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to do it to the other piece. Good to go. Let's assemble. Okay, I'm just looking at the screws that they gave me. They've got these small ones all the way up to the larger ones. And what I did is I took one of my pockets and I ran in these two screws. You know, this is the longer one and this is this one, the shorter one, just to see which one I should use. And I think I could use either one. And if you see, you know, put the wood up there, you can see that the longer one's not going to protrude out the end. But I think we'd be better off with the little bit smaller one. You can see how it's going to hit on that. So anyway, I think I'm going to use these second to the smallest although you could probably get away with the longer one but uh, if you sunk it real deep there is a chance that it could protrude out the side with my screws selected I'm ready to go I've clamped down the straight piece so that there's no chance of moving on me and you're gonna have to have you're gonna have to have an extension on your drill so you can get into that pocket you know so let's try this out. I'm going to square this up with a scrap piece. It wasn't too bad at all, actually. There we go. There's our first one. Really simple to do. Square up our piece. Now, of course, if I was doing this, you know, for a real project, I'd put a little glue there, too. Good. Flip it over and do the other side. Now, I heard a little cracking noise when I put this screw in here, and I went a little bit too tight, and this is already split, so, you know, I'm a rookie at this, still learning. Let's, let's see how it looks, though. Expect some cracking on this, though. I actually heard it. Hey, but it still looks good. Look at that. Man, that thing's strong, too. I'm pretty happy with that. I like it. Very good. So that is it. There's the Drill Master portable pocket hole jig from Harbor Freight. It's about half the cost of the competition. And it works just fine. It'll do exactly what I need for face plates for cabinets. I'm going to use it to build some shelves first. I did have a problem down here where my wood cracked, but it was already cracked, so it was my own fault. I shouldn't have gone into a cracked piece of wood. And as far as the holes on the back, you know, you always want to plant it so your holes are on the back. And I found, too, that if you get a piece of doll rod like this, it'll slide right into that pocket, and then you can just, you know, use your belt sander and just flush it off, and you won't even... You'll see the hole, but it will look finished, basically, if you're worried about the holes. So I like it. That's it. Hope you got some use out of this video, and we'll see you next time.
Bye for now.